Welcome back to another episode of the weekly educational series. Today I'm going to be discussing the harsh realities of dieting for fat loss. Now the reason I'm going to be talking about this today is because we've all been there before. We've all started a fat loss diet and hit a plateau sooner or later where any further uh, progress in regards to weight loss got really, really hard. And the reason this occurs is because of metabolic adaptation, which is going to be today's main topic. Now, before moving on and talking about why a plateau actually occurs and the hormones and other mechanisms that contribute to the plateau, we need to zoom out and think about this topic um, with an evolutionary perspective. And whenever you are wondering about why the body does a certain thing or reacts in a certain way, generally thinking about it from an evolutionary standpoint will help because most of the things your body does um, stem from our evolution. Thousands of years ago, when cavemen roamed the earth, they relied on their body fat stores to maintain survival during times when food was scarce, okay? When they just weren't able to go out and get food. Now, really, when you think about it, this is the reason that we are alive today. It's because fat allowed us to survive those times. So adipose tissue itself is our greatest form, uh, our body's greatest form of energy storage. Okay, we can store a lot more energy that we um, get from our food intake in fat than we can in any other part of the body. For example, in muscles, we can store carbohydrate as glycogen, but it is nowhere near the amount that we can store within our adipose tissue. So we need to understand that fat, to a certain degree, is desirable for our body. Okay, because it allows us to maintain survival. And you know, back in the caveman days when starvation signals were being sent to the body due to the fact that they just weren't eating any food, their metabolism adapted in a way where fat storage became more efficient and energy use became more efficient too. Now, if we fast forward thousands of years, the same uh, concept still applies. Dieting and calorie restriction is essentially sending those same starvation signals to the nervous system and to the brain forcing it to adapt and it adapts by upregulating and downregulating certain hormones ultimately trying to reduce your metabolic rate and increase your calorie intake okay the goal here is to restore the energy deficit that you are creating and gain back the lost fat now before moving on it is important to understand that this is all relative so some people will not experience the same metabolic adaptation that other people will. And this is very dependent on our genetics and the body weight or body fat set point theory. So this theory states that we all have a genetic set point where our body just likes to sit at when it comes to body weight. It's our comfortable zone. Now this set point is very uh, genetically determined. Okay, so we can kind of call it a settling range. Okay, that is very genetically uh, determined. And the set point is a more defined range and is impacted by our nutrition habits, lifestyle habits, and exercise habits over a long period of time. So for example, if you have been sitting at 80 kilos for 10 years, your body has obviously become accustomed to this weight. And we could say that this is your body weight set point. The further you move from that set point, the more uh, pronounced the me metabolic adaptation will be. If you lose 10 kilos, you know, after 10 years of sitting at 80 kilos, then your body is going to be fighting uh, really hard to pull you back up to 80 kilos because that is your body's comfortable weight. Okay, if you just want to lose a couple kilos uh, for summer, then metabolic adaptation isn't probably going to occur to the same uh, magnitude as it would for someone uh, else who is a lot further from their set point. So now that we have established some of the main considerations, I'm going to talk about how a plateau actually occurs uh, upon starting a weight loss diet. So as you see, I've got a bit of a graph here. We've got time at the bottom, so the duration of the diet, and we've also got the deficit size here. Now, obviously, when we start a fat loss diet, we are creating an energy deficit. And let's just say we create a 500 um, calorie deficit. Okay, so a pretty large deficit size. Now, we're obviously going to be losing weight um, 
at this uh, point, okay, because we are now burning or using more energy than we are consuming. Over time, however, as I said, your metabolism starts to adapt, okay, starts to upregulate, downregulate certain hormones. And eventually, the goal here is to reduce that deficit size. Okay, so remember, I mentioned that your body is trying to restore the energy deficit you are create, creating. The more severe the energy deficit is, the larger the magnitude of the adaptation. Okay, and the longer you send uh, those starvation signals to your body, the magnitude of the, the adaptations will also increase. Okay, so we've got two factors there that will determine how pronounced the adaptations are. So let's just say this is your energy output. Okay, so the amount of energy you expend on a daily basis. And this is your energy input. So the calories you consume on a daily basis. Over time, what happens is your body is trying to force your energy output to reduce. Okay, and we'll talk about how in a second. And it is also trying to force you to eat more food and increase your calorie intake. So your intake starts to increase. Now over time, notice how the two points meet, okay? And the deficit size has now shrunk and pretty much diminished, okay? Ultimately, it has inhibited any further fat loss, okay? And reason being is because now we are not in a deficit anymore. We are at maintenance. Now, as I said, certain hormones um, regulate this process and allow your metabolism to adapt. One of the main ways it adapts, and I men I've mentioned this a few times, is by reducing your energy expenditure. And it does this through uh, NEAT predominantly, so non-exercise activity thermogenesis. If you've ever been in a fat loss phase okay, and lost a considerable amount of weight, you would have realized that you get really fatigued, you get really lethargic, and you don't move as much as you did when you weren't uh, in a deficit, okay? Non-voluntary movements also tend to reduce um, when you have lost a considerable amount of weight, okay? So things like fidgeting, little things like that are all being reduced in aim of bringing your energy output uh, down. Now, obviously, because we're losing weight in a deficit, then we're going to be moving around less body mass which contributes to our basal metabolic rate. And this also reduces the amount of uh, calories that you are expending on a daily basis, okay? And another thing we need to take into account is when you're exercising and you're in a deficit, you just aren't as thermogenic as you were um, previously or pre-diet, okay? And when I say thermogenic, I mean your body just doesn't produce as much heat as it used to. And this is partly due to a decrease in uh, sympathetic nervous system activation, okay, which has a considerable impact on things like your heart rate um, and heat regulation within the body. So those things tend to drop, which again will bring this down. So I'll note that down. So we've got energy expenditure and that decreases, okay, which is why this slope is heading in a downward direction. We've also got hormones like thyroid hormone, which decreases um, in an energy deficit, and that also has a large impact on your um, energy expenditure in the day. Now, we also have a hormone named leptin, which is one of the most powerful hormones when it comes to this topic. Okay, leptin is secreted from the fat cells, and as we lose fat, it starts sending signals to our nervous system, telling us to reduce our energy expenditure, and even decrease our satiety. So satiety refers to the satisfaction that we get after consuming a meal. Okay, and if that is down, so if satiety is decreased, we are more prone to overeating and increasing a caloric intake. Okay, so leptin goes down, and it has an effect on both our input and our output. Okay, now another hormone that has the potential to impact our calorie intake is ghrelin, okay? Ghrelin is usually termed the hunger hormone, that when you are dieting, hunger tends to go up, and ghrelin is very timing dependent, 
Okay, so when it is time to eat meals based on your circadian rhythm, ghrelin will increase and hunger will increase, okay? Now, ghrelin and leptin are the two hormones that really make it tough for us to adhere to a diet um, as, as the diet goes on, okay? Because they tend to, the effects of these hormones tend to become more pronounced as we lose more and more weight. So, ghrelin actually goes up, okay? So those are some of the main reasons that uh, energy expenditure tends to drop during a dieting phase and our calorie intake is more prone to increasing. Um, there are more hormones that come into play here like cortisol which also um, increases when you are in an energy deficit. Cortisol when chronically elevated has a potential to um, impact T3, even energy expenditure, things like that. Okay, so it is, important to un it is important to understand that there are other hormones and mechanisms that come into play, but these are some of the major ones. Okay, so to recap what we have talked about today, when you start a diet, okay, inevitably metabolic adaptation will occur, and the deficit size will start to decrease, ultimately leading you to being at maintenance and not losing any further weight. Okay, from then, what you would need to do is decrease your calorie intake uh, further or increase your energy output, but just remember that your metabolism is very adaptive and it will keep adapting to what you are presenting it with. Okay, there are two main factors that are going to impact the magnitude of the adaptations that you that you feel. Um, the first one being the severity of the energy deficit, so how large it actually is. Remember, I said if you're only trying to lose a couple kilos for summer, you may not need to be on a 500 calorie deficit. You may just reduce calories um, by you know five to ten percent from maintenance, which isn't a very large reduction in calories, and you may not feel the metabolic adaptations um, as much. Okay, especially when compared to someone who's trying to lose more weight. The second factor that comes into play here is the duration of the diet. The longer the diet, the more pronounced these adaptations become. And that is why people or bodybuilders. Okay, physique athletes who undergo contest prep uh, find it really hard towards the end of the prep because they've been in a severe energy deficit for a prolonged period of time. So metabolic adaptation is at its absolute peak in those final weeks before an individual steps on stage. So guys, I hope that all made sense. I will be writing an article on this topic soon explaining things a little further and talking about some practical strategies that you can use to try and mitigate some of these metabolic adaptations. If you have any questions about today, be sure to send me through an email. I try to keep it pretty short, pretty simple, so I hope you have a full understanding of everything that I talked about today. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll see you next week.